Hi guys, hope all you are fine. This is today's topic regarding CC 3.1 welding or QC inspector latest questions. You can get from it here 10 questions and each question have their explanation. If you have any doubt for this particular question, you can send me a message to me. Anyway, let's start. So another thing uh, before we start the video, please like, share and subscribe my channel to get the regular updates and uh, and this one for the you can see the CC 3.1 question. I also make one series for the AWS questions so you can get uh, so many people get advantage from here also uh, good question and their explanation. So let's start. So you can see here the first question in a transverse oil tensile test if the break was in the impeded material the sample would be so if you see in the tensile test there is a break in the parent material it is not in the old metal so the option is here first one is rejected definitely it will not be rejected because the break in the parent metal not in the old metal Second is acceptable if the UTS is equal to or greater than the specified UTS on the plate. We can see the next option, but B option we can see it is acceptable definitely because it is not in the oil metal, the break, the break it was in the parent metal. So we can see the, uh, the right answer, what will be the, the option C is rejected also it will not be there. So option A and C is the rejected, it will not be the correct option. Option D, acceptable if the UTS is between 80 to 90 percent of the specified UTS of the plate. No. Also, we cannot only achieve only 80 to 90 percent achieve uh, specified UTS, then we can accept that oil tensile test. So no, we cannot accept. in that condition means 80 to 90 percent specified UTS then only we can accept not the in, in that condition we cannot accept so let's see in Ashmi section 9 what it what it is telling you can see the tensile st strength the option if you see the D point if the specimen breaks in the base metal outside the oil so it is happened the outside of the oil it is happened in the parent metal the test shall be accepted. So test will be accepted as meeting the requirement provided the strength is not more than 5% below the minimum specified tensile. So it should not be 5% below the minimum specified tensile strength. So tolerance, tolerance is the only 5% more than 5% It's not more than 5% below. So it is 80 to 90%. So it will not be acceptable. So correct answer will be the B. B is the correct option. Second question you see here, what we, what unit of measurement is used, used for sharp impact test? So I think everybody knows this one. First one, A is joules, B is Newton per millimeter square, C is kilojoule, D is VPN. So we need to know this one, the answer will be the sharp impact test. You can see here, comparison sharp impact test result, impact test energy room temperature, it is 197 joule and minus 20 degree centigrade temperature 49 joules. So joules is the correct answer. So option will be the A. Option A is the correct answer. Question number three, during a transfer tensile test, the first stage of the specimen goes through is known as. So you know the stress and diagram. In the stress and diagram, what will be the first stage? Plastic stage, elastic stage, deformed stage, UTS. Plastic stage, no, definitely. After elastic, it will be the plastic. So plastic is not the first stage. Deformed stage, no, it is not deformed the first stage. UTS stage, no, after elastic only it will go the UTS. So you can see the stress strain diagram here. You see the elastic, then lower yield point, then upper yield point. If the, you see the this area, the UTS, ultimate tensile strength. So the elastic is the first stage. So option B is the correct answer. Question number four, which NDT method is associated with Burma castle strip? So it is very important, Burma castle strip, why we are used? 
and where it is used. There is four options. One, A is radiography testing, B is the helium click testing, C is the magnetic particle testing, D is the ultrasonic testing. Definitely radiography testing we are not using there here. Helium leak testing also we are not using this Burma capsule strip. Only we have used this one for magnetic particle testing. See here. We need to know first what is Burma capsule strip. You see here. This is your welding and this is your one plate is here. So what to see here. This is called the magnetic flux indicator. For suitability you know you know how to check the magnetic flux in this particular strip. See here, magnetic flux indicated strip are widely used to indicate the presence of induced magnetic field during the magnetic particle inspection. So in magnetic particle inspection method, we need to check sometimes with crystal strip there is the presence of induced magnetic field is correct or not with the with the ferromagnetic material, you see, for inspection of the ferromagnetic material, flux indicator gives evidence of an external field in the air above the magnetized surface. So, flux indication, one of the evidence we are getting for the external field in the air. You can see the laminated magnetic flux strip, also known as type G Burma crystal strip have a core, there is a core of high permeability steel with brush cladding 0.0.002 inch or 0.05 mm thick on both sides. You can see there is a flux strip with laminated in two sides, but it is not laminated here. But it is also the one type of example I am giving to you, the magnetic flux strip with the laminated. The core material has three slots. You can see that in, the, in that core material, three slots have different width providing the discontinuity that so as linear indication in a magnetic field. So that plot, why they are providing that providing there is a linear indication you can you can find out by help of magnetic field. The strip are commonly used with the weight visible material for power pack equipment and EOP inspection. So this is the magnetic flux strip we are used for the magnetic field indicator we need to check. So the correct option is the four option is C. Question five, which entity method is associated with the use of yolk? First is radiography testing, B is the helium leak testing, C is the magnetic particle testing, D is the ultrasonic testing. So definitely we know very well the yolk is always used in the magnetic particle testing. We never use in radiographic and ultrasonic different principle for this particular testing. So you can see the MPI yolk is looking like this this type. So answer is the C. So question number six, the penetrating power of an X-ray set is, an, is expressed in. So there is in penetrating power for a particular X-ray or gamma ray you can see here. So A is curious, so X-ray what is the penetrating power? B is KV, C is IQY values, D is the number of the number after the isotope type. Definitely this would be the KV. KV we are using for the penetrating power for X-ray. You see here the question, what determines the penetrating power of an X-ray? That is the kilo voltage applied between anode and cathode. There is a kilo voltage applied, means KV. And the question, the determines the penetrating power for the gamma ray if you go the type of isotope means the wavelength of the gamma ray. So gamma ray that is the type of isotope we are using. That is the power. Like iridium 192 if you go the gamma ray then it's cobalt 60 that is the gamma ray the power of the penetrating the equipment penetrating the material. So answer B is the correct option. Question number seven, with which of the following unity process is it possible to detect both surface and sub slight subsurface detect up to 2 mm below the surface? So the question is in which entity process you can see surface and both surface subsurface defect we can see in the below 2 mm below 2 mm of the surface. So first is visual, 
Second is diapenitent. Visually, definitely we cannot see in the soft surface below 2 mm. Diapenitent magnetic particle using DC. Diapenitent only using only we can see the surface and surface. But up to 2 mm we cannot see. Then up to 2 mm for which matter? Magnetic particle using DC. Magnetic particle using AC. So definitely magnetic particle using DC is the correct answer. You can see here alternating current and the alternating current and direct current what is the what is the main difference electric current flows you can see here electric current flows through a conductor in a back and forth direction at specific interval means at the specific interval in the alternating current what will happen the electric current it will be go back and forth motion it provides the base sensitivity for the detection of surface discontinuity only. So this one in the AC we cannot see in the we cannot see the surface sub surface defect. We can see only the surface discontinuity. In direct current, what will happen? The electric current flows through a conductor in only one direction at all time. So in the DC, the electric current always go in the one direction. Note, DC from a battery source has been phased out in favor of rectified form of AC for surface and subsurface flaw detection. So in the DC we can see AC and DC we can see for subsurface and the sub and the surface defect. So the magnetic particle using DC is the correct answer. You can see here the just giving I am giving the correct explanation. FW DC is the full wave rectified and second one is half wave rectified, rectified that is HWDC. So full wave rectified means electric current flows through a conductor is one direction only and with the increased rate of pulsating surges and drops at the specified intervals. That is different different method. One is the that is FWDC means weight method of of inspection that is dye powder method inspection that is half wave rectified. So this is the only difference and why you are using DC that is the explanation here. The answer will be the C. Question 8 for MPI using the plots method which one of the which of the following statement is true. First is it may cause the arc damage on the specimen material surface. If you see the MPI, that is the broad method, which of the following statement is true, means which of the following is true. It requires fewer operators, therefore is easier. No. We are, we are using the correct operator also. The operator have their good knowledge in their professional skill. So B will not be the correct answer. C. It can be used to ferrite and non-ferrite material. No. It is only used for the ferrite material. Question D. Option D. It is quicker than using a EOC type electromagnet. Not quicker. It is the same process. So we cannot say this is quicker. So the correct answer will be that it may cause an arc damage on the specimen metal surface. Definitely it can be arc damage. Can be there. Could be there. So answer A will be the Option A is the correct answer. Question 9. With the DPI method of inspection after the contact time has elapsed, the dye should be removed by. So you see the DPI method, you have finished the inspection. You see that your contact time has been finished. The dye should be removed by. So you should remove the dye. So how it will be removed, there is option spraying the surface with the remover till all dye has gone the Y with a clean cloth. No, we not, we not, we cannot remove with the remover. Second B option spraying with the developer, then wiping with the cloth. No, we cannot use the developer after dye. Why we need to put developer again? Option C, wipe clean using a lint free cloth soaked in a solvent remover. C, it will may be the correct answer. A, B will not be the correct answer. Option D, so we have to wait for D. It does not matter how it is done as long as all traces of dye are removed. No, we need to follow the rules. We need to follow the process. So what is the process of DPI? You see the step one is the pre-cleaning. Step two is the apply penetrant. Step three is the clean of penetrant. 
So I've clean up the written and step four inspection you see the step one step two step three you have finished the inspection what will happen so you can check one by one pre-cleaning what will be there apply penetrant what will be the approximate time dwell time it's clearly mentioned here so i will go for a step four you see inspection inspection should take place immediately after the developer has been applied any defects means after developer applied you can see immediately the inspection you can start the inspection any defect presence will show as the bleed out during the development time. After full inspection has been carried out, post cleaning generally applied, required. So after you have finished all the inspection, you need to cleaning that material. There should not be any dye. So what will need to be now do? Above question asks about how to cleaning surface after apply penetration. So then penetrant how to remove? So answer C is the correct answer. So we'll go to the next page. It is clearly mentioned the method of removal depends upon the type of penetrant used. The main method we are usually use is solvent removal penetrant. The solvent can be applied by spray or by cloth. You can use the solvent or by spray or you can choose the cloth. During the initial inspection stage after dwell time, the excess penetrant should be removed by applying the solvent to a cloth and then wiping the surface clean. So you have to apply that solvent to the cloth and you have to clean that area to wipe that penetrant. So you can understand now the option C is the correct answer. Question 10. Which of the following commonly used radioactive isotope as the longest half life. First is iridium 192, B is cobalt 60, C is thulium 170, D is iterobium 169. So the correct answer is you can understand what determine the penetrating power of gamma rays, the type of isotope. So type of isotope means the gamma sources. What gamma sources are there? Iridium 192. That is from 10 to 15 mm, 50 mm we can use, mostly use. Cobalt 60, more than 50 mm. Ytterbium, less than 10 mm. Thulium, less than 10 mm. Cassium, less than 10 mm. So, the cobalt 60 is more than 50 mm. The half life is, that is the, so it is, it has half life longest. So, you can see the cobalt 60, the half life is the longest, that is the thickness range also more. So correct answer will be the longest half life that is for cobalt 60. The answer will be the B. So I think you understand the all 10 question with their explanation. If you have any question that you can just reply to me. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe my channel to get the regular videos. Thank you.